Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nigel. I'm also known as Elite Eerie Vlogger and today we're diving into the fascinating topic of the annual winter maintenance of the Welling Canal. Ever wondered why this massive waterway gets drained every year and how it looks empty? Well stick around and you're going to find out why and what it looks like. The Welland Canal is a crucial part of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway system, connecting Lake Erie to Lake Ontario. This 43 kilometer long canal, which is 26.7 miles, allows ships to bypass Niagara Falls, making it a vital route for maritime traffic. The Welland Canal has a rich history dating back to its opening in 1829. Over the years, it has undergone several expansions and improvements to accommodate larger vessels and increase traffic. Today, it's an essential component of North America's shipping infrastructure. But with great importance comes great responsibility, and to ensure the canal remains safe and operational, it undergoes extensive maintenance every winter. The canal is approximately 43 kilometers in length, which is 27 miles, and when it is drained, the water levels are lowered significantly, especially in sections of lock number seven and lock number one. This process involves managing the water in the canal and the surrounding areas to ensure the maintenance crews can safely inspect and repair the infrastructure. This is lock one of the Welland Canal and is the first lock in the canal system that connects Lake Ontario to Lake Erie. It's located here in St. Catharines near Port Weller in Ontario. Its function is to lift and lower ships between Lake Ontario and the actual canal system with an elevation change of 3.5 meters, which is 11.5 feet. This is a section of waterway between locks one and two, and it was only just recently refilled with water. Next to lock one is the Port Weller Dry Docks, which is a very important site for ship maintenance and construction. Currently in the dry dock, having some work done is uh, CSL's the Right Honorable Paul J. Martin. All right, this is the bridge at lock two of the Welland Canal. It's a vertical lift bridge that allows both vehicle, sh uh, vehicle traffic and also ships to pass through. Yeah, if you look down here right now, you can uh, see uh, there's not much water in here. So you get a good view of the, uh, the gates. Uh, this is as the ships will come out of lock two, they'll, tr they'll go over this. But with very little water in, I never knew they had these concrete um, lines, like pillars. Uh, I guess it's part to strengthen it. I'm, I'm guessing that's what it's there for. And there you have it, uh, virtually an empty canal. Now just to the right or to the east of the uh, bridge and lock two is this little section of water. So I'm right here filming this next bit for you and I want to look at this bit here. So this is all full of water and now I can show you what it looks like with very little water in it. Wow, look at all that garbage. This is kind of like a filter. Great. Now moving down the uh, canal, we're mo moving south towards Lot 3, so we're right between 2 and 3 right now, uh, just by the Garden City Skyway where the QEW goes over the canal. And it's interesting to see um, what I find down here, because all this is usually underwater. I didn't realize um, this here is just full of rocks inside. I don't know if they've been placed there, or that's what they use to anchor it or support it, whatever. But there's just thousands of chunks of rocks in there, which I found fascinating. Uh, when the water's there, you wouldn't have normally seen that. So that was new. In the background there is the Queenston Lift Bridge, uh, which is the road you take in case the Skyway's got a problem. Well, how much water is in this canal? Well, uh, exact figures can fluctuate based on specific maintenance needs and conditions. Each year, the process involves draining millions of cubic meters of water. But no one really knows exactly how much, it's just millions. One of the most critical aspects of this maintenance is ensuring the locks are functioning correctly. These locks are what allow the ships to navigate the elevation changes along the canal from Lake Ontario up to Lake Erie and vice versa.
It's a hive of activity uh, going on here at lock number three. It looks like they're doing a lot of work on the uh, gate locks here. Uh, the, uh, the locks heading up to lock number four. It's part of a series of the flight locks, which includes locks two, three, and four that work together to raise ships in succession, making the ascent and descent more efficient. Also, there's a viewing area here for those that are interested that want to come and watch the uh, ships come and go. And there's also a fantastic museum located at uh, lock number three. Really is hard to believe that ships sail down here. It's hard to imagine it right now. Moving further on up the canal, this is lock number four, which is located in Thorold in Ontario, and it's just south of lock number three. This is the entrance to lock number four. With the drone being so low down to the ground, we get to get a great perspective of just how big these lock gates are. This is the downstream gate of lock number four. This lock gate is 18 meters tall, which is 59 feet. And each gate roughly weighs about 453,000 kilograms, or about 1 million pounds. There is an array of reasons why the Welland Canal is drained in the winter. It's primarily done for maintenance and safety reasons, but there's another one. It's the freeze protection. Freezing temperatures during the winter can cause ice to form in the canal. Since water expands when it freezes, ice could potentially damage the lock structures, valves and other infrastructure. So by draining the canal, the risk of freeze-related damage is now minimized. This is lock number seven, and what we're gonna do is actually send the drone from here down through locks seven, six, and basically just to the tip of number five, so you get a good look. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the upstream gate, and directly behind those gates, these, uh, the set of gates you see right there, they are the sector gates, and that is what holds back all the water that is still in the canal uh, going all the way back to Lake Erie. Sector gates are large rotatable gates used in navigation locks, dams, and other structures. They can be used to divert material, control water levels, and prevent flooding. Sector gates are mainly used in sea locks at the entrances to harbours and marinas, but they're also used in canals and tidal rivers to help vessels pass through.
All right, there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. And don't forget to like, comment, and even subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. Until the next time, stay safe. See you all very soon. I think they're going to start filling it up tomorrow.